Johnny five so it's been a couple weeks I have been busy with a few different vehicles one of them being a land speed car and further detail on that it's my friend Jim Hoogerhide and car 666 the beast <laughs> that's not the full name so that car had some issues with its 12 volt wiring. I've been going back and forth with conversation with him, uh, him and my friend Ian, about getting a new 12 volt wiring harness put in the car. Previously, the car had a pretty CAN bus heavy system in it, and it was causing a lot of issues. And we were struggling trying to get the CAN bus to work perfectly. And when it comes to race cars and race vehicles, aircraft and those sorts of things, you don't want to have complication in the vehicle. The more simple the vehicle can be, the better. The less components that are in the vehicle, the better. And when you got something loaded with CAN bus, which I don't personally like to deal with it as much as possible, then you're going to end up with a lot of issues. With that in mind, he brought the car down to my shop here in California, Southern California, and we started taking the old harness out, completely out. Before it had a PDU inside of it, and basically the PDU acts like a fuse block and a relay block put together. And those can have some problems. The idea of it is great, but in this application, in a race application, especially a vehicle that goes over 300 miles an hour and has zero suspension going over salt and dirt and all sorts of uneven terrain, although Bonneville and El Mirage are flat, they're really not. They're insanely bumpy. He has metal uh, spun aluminum wheels up front. They're, they're not, there's not even rubber on the car in the front. The only rubber is in the back. So that being said, anything electronic, anything that's delicate, is just going to get thrashed. So again, we pulled the harness out. We got a new harness from Revolt Systems. My friend Eddie over there uh, has these pre-made harnesses for the T2C computer. That's the computer that is running his car. And it's more or less a plug-and-play system, which is awesome. So it only really took us a little bit more than a weekend to completely rewire the 12 volt, the low voltage side of the car. We put in a normal fuse block and we put in just two relays. That's it. That's all that is running that car now. And after that we were able to turn the car on and get it to basically start talking to the inverter. And that was the next challenge, is to get the communication going for the inverter. Um, there are some further 12-volt issues as far as powering and where power was going. So we were popping a few fuses, and I retraced everything, found the issues. Um, they are just, you know, dumb placement of stuff. It, it happens when you're do doing a total rebuild of a 12-volt harness. And got that sorted. Got the inverter talking to the computer. And then... I went ahead and did a high pot test, is what they call it. Basically, a high voltage, um, high mega ohm test on the stator and the inverter. And now, on a Tesla inverter on the LDU, you want to be 4.5 mega ohms or higher. That's the standard from Tesla. And so, I tested the inverter, and it was completely shorted to ground. That tells me two things. The inverter is welded to the, to the ground or the stator is welded to the ground. 
And so I isolated the stator from the inverter, you know, took the phase leads off and checked the inverter. The inverter turned out great. I forget the mega ohm reading, but it was above four and a half. And then I checked the stator. The stator was just zero and the mega ohm meter barely went above 11 volts, which it's supposed to jump right to about 530-ish volts. And the mega ohms are supposed to climb from there. So that thing was totally torched. We pulled the stator out, pulled the, well, the motor out basically, um, got that all apart. So luckily I had a stator here that was from Revol, and I hit up Eddie to see if, if we could use it. Um, and we ended up, he ended up letting us use the stator, which is awesome. Again, saved our day. And we replaced the stator in the car. We pulled the rotor out of his old stator, put it in the new one, put some fresh bearings on it, cleaned up the rotor and everything, made sure it was good to go, stuck it back together, stuck it back in the car, and we were basically about to run it, turn it on, got everything going, had my app open for the TTC on my phone so I could see throttle inputs and um, you know voltage and all those sorts of things. And nothing was happening when we put it in drive. And then we were kind of tired at that point. This is like day three, I think. Yeah, day three. Uh, just long, long days. So all, all of us were pretty smoked. And basically, I got to the point where I was like, uh, maybe the inverter screwed up or torched. So I shut it all down. And then I'm like, hey, wait, let's... Uh, Turn it back on. I forgot the TTC can see faults. So I turned it back on, looked at what the TTC was seeing for the fault, and it said encoder. <laughs> Whoops. So went in the back, realized that there was a pin inside one of the Deutsch connectors that was pushed back. And the little clip that goes inside of the Deutsch wasn't there at all. Eh, it happens. So we fixed that, put that back in. Plugged it in, boom, motor lights right off. Yeah. I uh, did a few things to get it to go from there, but they were super minimal. And the car is running now. So, that brings me to the question. What do you think this thing's going to do at Bonneville? We might already know by the time this video is up. I have no idea. But hey, let's make it fun anyway. I'm guessing 334 miles an hour. Uh, it did 306 before with the battery pack that Ian and I built a little while back and it had an exit of like 314 I think from what I remember. So hopefully that's my guess 334. That'd be a good number. That would make it the second fastest EV on the planet. Right now it's the third. There's another car, I think it was Venturi. I can't remember that. But they did a record 314 miles an hour. And then my friend Eddie <laughs> did 353, I think it was, on his record uh, with Team Vesco. And they had a dual Tesla LDU set up on that car. So two Tesla motors pushing that car. And he has the fastest EV on the planet. So... It'd be cool if I could beat my friend, but that's probably not going to happen right now. But hey, you never know. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. The next one will be for the diesel Kubota. I have some parts on the table there. Prius inverter came in. Um, the Logic card came in uh, from Ireland. And yeah, I'm going to start wiring the thing and put some voltage to it and start trying to get that generator to work. So, see you soon. Thanks.